Now, some of the biggest names in European car making are facing major disruption after flooding in Switzerland paralyzed aluminium production in the country. Brands including Mercedes, Porsche, BMW and Jaguar Land Rover are hunting for alternative supplies after Novellis were forced to close down their mill in the Swiss city of Sierre. Car makers have been posting profit warnings in the face of shortages. Well, let's talk now to Mark Smythe, who's an automotive journalist. Mark, welcome. Good to see you. How bad is this? Good afternoon. Yes, an interesting question and one that has different answers depending whether you are at Porsche, BMW, Mercedes or JLR. Uh, Porsche certainly hit the hardest. Uh, recent earnings calls revealed it could have to cut its production by as much as, as many as 10,000 vehicles. That's around 11% of its production volume and uh, could uh, reduce its bottom line by 2 billion euros this year. That's essentially because they have such a high volume of aluminium in the content in their cars. Jaguar Land Rover assessing the situation. Um, spokesperson today saying that uh, they describe it as fluid and they are waiting to see what plans Novellis can put in place. They do have the potential of a backup because they are owned by the giant uh, Tata Group, which does, of course, make its own aluminium and steel. So they are looking at that option. And BMW and Mercedes both say... They've already made uh, alternative plans but haven't disclosed what they are with alternative suppliers. Uh, for those of us who are not distinguished uh, automotive journalists, just explain why the aluminium supplied by Novellis is so crucial to uh, making cars. Well, over the years, we first used aluminium really in cars in the 1970s, but uh, over the years as we've uh, had this quest for lighter vehicles, particularly with the advent of low emission zones and electric vehicles, Aluminium is significantly lighter than steel, um, but uh, equally in some, in some cases stronger than. So uh, the manufacturers are looking to increase the amount of aluminium used in their cars and reduce their weight by anything up to 40%. Porsche, for example, looking at uh, increasing the aluminium in its electric Taycan, which could drop the uh, uh, amount or the weight of the vehicle by 40%. But there are a significant number of components throughout a vehicle. The wheels, for example, use around 20% 20, uh, 20 uh, of wheels rely on aluminium. Um, the engines themselves and the body panels. So, yes, it is a, a huge part of the industry. Um, you might think then this is a rather stupid question. Um, how come all of these big car companies are so dependent on one supplier? Well, uh, yes. Um, it does seem somewhat odd, and particularly in light of how uh, the chip shortage that we had during the pandemic and how everyone started scrabbling to find alternative suppliers. One of the issues is that it's not just about Porsche's reliance on this supplier. It's all its suppliers, what we would call maybe tier one or tier two suppliers. So uh, people who manufacture other components for Porsche and their reliance on a supplier. When you actually create that whole mesh network, then you realize how reliant you are. Um, lots of manufacturers do have alternatives, of course. Novellis has a plant in China, um, which is producing aluminium. And, uh, of course, manufacturers are looking at whether they have access to that. But there are constraints. Um, you can't suddenly turn around. Norsk Hydro, for example, is one company that said, uh, maybe we'll be able to produce more aluminium for you. But you can't suddenly just produce more. You have to plan for these things and that's why Porsche is saying for the rest of this year it's going to have issues. And Mark, so anyone thinking, well watching this, thinking I really must rush out this weekend and buy a new Mercedes, Porsche, BMW uh, or Jaguar Land Rover, what does this mean for the customer? Uh, at the moment it's unlikely to mean anything because uh, of course production volumes are already being supplied. Um, it's later on down the line that we could see, uh, certainly towards the end of the year, possibly into early 2025, that we could see a shortage of models coming out uh, with Porsche, as I say, cutting, potentially cutting production by up to 10,000 vehicles a year. That certainly is going to impact on its Porsche Taycan. Um, it's just launched its latest uh, generation, or the second generation, um, and uh, they have extensive use of aluminium throughout their vehicles. Jaguar Land Rover is insistent it won't impact on its new electric Range Rover, which comes out at the end of this year, um, which I have no doubt they've used extensive amount of aluminium for in order to reduce the significant weight of that SUV. Mark, good to see you. Thank you very much for your time. Mark uh, Smy, the automotive journalist.